Baggies fans, welcome to ExpressStar.com. My name is Johnny Dreary. As always, I'm alongside Mr. Lewis Cox, our Albion correspondent, after a, a pretty unbelievable afternoon at the Hawthorns. Um, Albion have been beaten by two goals to nil in the Black Country derby, the, uh, the hotly anticipated Black Country derby. First one for 12 years, but we're not really going to be talking an awful lot about a really spirited and good performance from Albion. We're going to be talking about the ugly scenes, the disgraceful scenes that we saw um, in areas of the ground. Um, that have completely marred what was a, a pretty a pretty decent game up to that point. Um, Coxie, we'll, we's start on that and we'll, we'll finish on a positive note and talk about Albion's display. Mm -hmm. But um, we're hearing stories of, of, of things that have gone on of, of potentially Wolves fans in the Albion end. But whatever has happened, what we saw is inexcusable. What we saw was akin to football hooliganism before, back before in I back in yeah, yeah long before, before we, we were on. here at you know eighties seventies whenever it was and. It was disgraceful, really, what we've seen today. Yeah, harrowing day, really. Um, I mean, most of it went on down in the corner of the Brummie, didn't it? And quite a way away from us. But um, seeing it even from where we did, obviously having to report on it, it's not not nice at all, is it? Let's be honest, it's awful to see. And I mean, that, that was obviously the, the main hotspot. Um, but as you said, things were sort of going off everywhere, weren't they? Certainly over in, that, um, in the Millennium Corner there. Um, where we saw things being carried away, blood, arrests, you know, down from um, the Brummie Road, stretched all the way down here, looked like an elderly fan to me, Albion fan sort of trying to tell the, the Albion fans he was okay, um, the, the, the rumours sort of hearing um, aren't nice, obviously we, you know, we're not going to go too into those because you know, it's only sort of his they are moment, confirmed. They are confirmed. And, and obviously look, we all know people, you and I both know people, friends, colleagues, who are who sit down there and have uh, told us what they think they've seen and things like that? But yeah, investigation already been confirmed. It's underway. The, the FA, FA has started, started um, an investigation. Yeah. Look, I, what we saw with our own eyes and what happened was that Albion players, Kyle Bartley being one of them, I think Thomas Asante being another, but certainly Bartley, and, and a number more, you know, more Albion players had to go down into that corner and in Bartley in Bartley's case, uh, grab at least one of his kids possibly two, he had two with him. Um, daughters um, and uh, bring them away from it and bring them down into the tunnel um, which is pretty pretty harrowing isn't it really when you know obviously that's the um, that the players family area and, and you know those players are supposed to be out there you know not not worrying about the safety and health of their family awful awful to see um, just a, a dark day I, I would say um, like like you said I agree that the 80 minutes of football yes Okay, it ended up with Wolves scoring a second goal, but and we'll get on to this. But I think you know it was a good competitive affair with a great atmosphere, wasn't it? Um, and really been I, I hadn't seen and we hadn't seen online or anything any real trouble, had we? Remember no. saying to you about yeah, halfway yeah. through, um, little bits in the first half. Like, there's, I think we think Wolves fans in front of us in the Halford Lane end were to, yeah were, were to leave. What I will say on you've, you've mentioned there about the players' families have just been. In listening to Carlos Corbran and all the, the players' families were were, 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 were safe and and, yeah. and and yeah, I know there's been reports of, of some people injured and we you know we saw someone coming out on a stretch from there, but we do hope that everyone's okay. Um, well, and there will be a number of arrests. Yeah. I've, I've seen confirmation of uh, at least two arrests, yeah. but that's that's from what we saw. I mean, that's the very starting point, is it? The, there, I said the tip of the. Iceberg. It just overshadows it, doesn't it, Coxie? In terms of awful. it'll all come out in the wash, and I'm pretty ashamed of what I saw today. In terms of not just Albion and Wolves, but for, to see scenes like that Shameful. in modern day Shameful football. is a good word. You know, and I think some people, you know, I put a tweet out saying you don't want to see these scenes and people said, oh no, we do. And I know there's a small minority, but we don't want to see these scenes. In no, games. Every, everyone loves it, handbags between yeah. players, don't they? And a bit of a scuffle and, and all of that. Like we all want a bit of passion no, exactly. and heatedness, but not that, not that. Oh. Because no. that's, you know, that's, I don't know what that was. That's health and safety of, fans isn't it and of course it is of course it is and people's you know, families it will all come out in the wash i'm sure we'll, we'll find out exactly what went on but yeah pretty disgraceful scenes Coxie, up to that point it was a case of um as we thought wolves might do to alvin um, and alvin played in his hands hit on the break twice but in terms of alvin's display alvin were having all the chances they, they had three even four really really clear-cut chances in that first half they had a chance in the second half with brandon thompson sante i think that was at one was that one nil yeah, that was one nil yeah. to equalize yeah, yeah. and it was a case of you know, what if in the end today? Yeah. But a, a, you know, a performance where for a, a good hour, Albion very much looked like they were the Premier League side at times. Yeah, Albion started much the better side, didn't they? First 15 or 20, I think, before it settled down, it was all Albion. 
uh, exactly what we spoke about in videos, podcasts. When I mean, we went on, uh, I went on WM with Wolves correspondent uh, Liam Keane earlier, and I was like, Albion need to start well to use the atmosphere and keep them on their side, you know, quietly away and down, which yeah. happened, didn't it? And, yeah, yeah. and Wallace was all over Totti um, Gomez, wasn't he? Um, all over him, couldn't deal with him, and balls into the box, and we've had the one Tom Sante header, the Wallace header, they were the two sort of moments, and you were saying to me, weren't you, that these are pretty decent openings, I thought, especially the the Wallace header, uh, both, both three headers, both, both three Jose headers. Saar, weren't they, um, and then, oh, yeah, I don't don't want to dwell on this particularly, and we've got a podcast tomorrow, but the first goal, I mean, oh, the first goal, goal. In Fury, but, wasn't yeah, it? It, it's funny, because at half-time, you know, shortly after the first goal, I was... What an awful way to concede in any game, in any game. And let's be honest, we spoke to, I spoke to Jed Wallace down there in the mid zone, and he's he actually referenced how you know Huddersfield it's happened, Leicester it's happened, and now mm. now this. But different points of the game, obviously different context. But Albion were on top, were forcing set pieces like the Moat corner that obviously ten seconds later when Wolves score. I mean that just shouldn't happen. I'm all they're for, the fine margins, aren't they, between yeah. the Championship and the Premier League? Yeah, they're, yeah. they're they're the little moments, you know. Yeah. You saw how well. You know, Neto took his goal at the, at the Brummie. We saw how well Cunha took Which the goal down here. Debate, actually, the actually, it's an interesting debate because I'm all for invention uh, and imaginative attack and creative play, like uh, trying something different from set pieces. And it looked to me, I don't know if Wallace quite confirmed this, but it looked to me like Moat was trying to pull it to outside the box. Like you were so, always used to see the old Beckham and Scholes, yeah, you yeah. know, and, but for Wallace, actually, ironically, to, to smash it in or maybe at least a little, take a touch. Maybe a little bit ambitious. But, um, yeah, Doherty of Wolves read it well and, and broke away and 10 seconds later they score and it, it's an interesting debate because yeah, it's an argument, isn't there? Like, I just sort of toss it in the box and let yeah. Bartley attack it or kick it. But then there's no saying Wolves don't head clear or the keeper doesn't grasp it and they clear. But um, yeah, to, to, to have fallen behind, the, the first goal was so key, wasn't it? Let's be honest. To have fallen behind in that manner when you're on top, you're the one threatening, you're having the, the play, the efforts at goal, yeah. so frustrating. And I don't think Alvin quite carried the same threat and the quite the same sort of amount of chances after, after the break until about 20 minutes to go. That Thomas Asante moment just brought Tom Fellows on, hadn't they? That was the big sort of um, ace in the, you know, whatever the saying is. That was the big um, ace in the pack. Yeah, well, I don't know what I'm trying to say. That was the big <laughs> one for the, 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 the head coach to, to bring on and hopefully because it was a very young Appian bench, wasn't it? Extremely young. Nine players absent today for, for Albion. All senior players who all probably would have been in and around it involved. Yeah. Fellows comes on, immediately sets up that massive chance for Asante. I mean, I, at the time, I thought, mm, that feels like the moment. Yeah. Um, a few minutes later, obviously, uh, Albion, high defensive line, Cunha gets played in just onside, finishes brilliantly, doesn't he, unfortunately? Um, and then, obviously, everything we spoke about kicked off. and. When it resumed 35 minutes later, you know, 36 minutes away, strange, strange, something we've never experienced. It was a weird 10 mm. or 12 minutes, wasn't it? It was weird. I mean, Alvin still had moments. It, it, okay, Griffiths has had a save right at the death of, to deny 3 0, but it was all Albion. But I wrote in our match day blog, it almost felt like a friendly or like a testimonial that the roar from the crowd had gone because everything felt a little bit redundant after what had happened to me. I would have been really interested if Albion had got a goal back. Swift was denied, wasn't he? Um, but uh, a lot to unpick, really. I mean, you're just trying to remember almost what yeah. happened on the footy side of it. But but actually... Um, overshadowed what, by... Oh, uh, massively tainted yeah. and overshadowed, massively. There's only one talking point, unfortunately. I mean, Albion lost the football side of it as well. Let's, let's not kid ourselves. They played well, but still lost. But unfortunately... Um, totally tarnished and overshadowed by the, the events and that's you know the, uh, we mentioned the investigation you know, obviously that will lead to punishments and, and yeah I mean yeah. fines you know great isn't it yeah, yeah. And just yeah uh, one for another day as the investigation develops but um, a dark day definitely dark day definitely positive signs but ugly scenes on the day that Wolves break their 27 year long hoodoo at the Hawthorns what's that like one win in 27 years and seven no wins Still a, still a bad record, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? Uh, final score couldn't here. Quite, couldn't quite make 10,000 days, eh? <laughs> final score uh, here at the Hawthorns. Um, Albion nil, Wolves 2. All the rest of the reaction to today and everything we've seen on ExpressSR.com and we'll be back tomorrow with the Baggage Broadcast.